Hi everyone. So English writers and the pen names. English writers and the pen names or pseudonyms. It's always an interesting topic for any literature enthusiast or anyone who is interested in knowing the author and the works. So in this video, we will be dealing with some English writers and the pseudonyms that they used in order to write the works. So before getting into the writers and the names, one thing that you have to keep in your mind is the reason or the many reasons why these writers choose a pseudonym. It could be many. For example, uh, you can find some writers who wanted to uh, move away from publicity or who never wanted to be treated as a celebrity. So they hide their real name because the people, they might be introverts, they really wanted their space. So they chose to write in another name where their uh, privacy or where their individuality wouldn't be exposed and uh, some writers they chose a pseudonym or they chose a pen name because they don't want their life or they don't want the other works written by them to be comp compared with the works that they are writing under the pseudonym so they wanted to distance themselves from the other works or the other novels that they had written or then we could find uh, some female writers who chose to write in male pseudonyms because they thought their works wouldn't be that popular if they were published under female names or they and uh, in order to attract the publishers in order to attract the audience because they thought that if it's uh, female writers then it might sound too feminine the work would be sound too feminine or not that popular so it wouldn't be accepted by the publisher so there are some writers some female writers who wrote under masculine names or male uh, writers and then uh, we can find uh, some writers who use multiple names okay multiple pen names or multiple pseudonyms because they wanted each work to be distant from each other or then we can find that some writers they use they use pseudonyms at the beginning of their career but when they establish themselves they start to use their real name so there can be different different uh, reasons why the writers chose a pseudonym or a pen name so now let's look on the different writers who wrote under pseudonyms so first we have mark twain Okay, so Mark Twain. Mark Twain is the uh, pseudonym of Samuel Clemens. So the thing is that uh, I have here given another name that is Thomas Jefferson Snodgrass. So Samuel Clemens, that's the real name of Mark Twain. So he wrote under multiple pseudonyms uh, which include Mark Twain. Then he has also written a series of humorous essays or humorous letters. Okay, under the pseudonym Thomas Jefferson Snodgrass. So the character, so the real person, real name is Samuel Clemens and finally he uh, chose to write under Mark Twain and that name really uh, brought him famous. So he uh, continued writing in Mark Twain. So remember Mark Twain, Mark Twain is the pseudonym or the pen name of Samuel Clemens and Samuel Clemens has also written under the pseudonym, to under the uh, pseudonym Thomas Jefferson Snodgrass. So this American author Mark Twain. Uh, is a pseudonym of Samuel Clemens and he has also published a series of humorous letters under the pen name Thomas Jefferson Snodgrass. Then we have the famous writer Lewis Carroll. Lewis Carroll is the pen name of Charles Ludwig Dodson. Charles Ludwig Dodson took the pen name Lewis Carroll and this name uh, it's like a process because he uh, reversed the first I mean he took the first two names of his uh, name that is Charles and Ludwig then he uh, reversed the order and then he translated it into Latin and then he and this Latin name he translated back to English which ultimately resulted in Lewis Carroll so Charles Ludwig he, uh, I mean, he reversed the name into Ludwig, uh, Ludwig Charles and then he translated it into Latin and then he translated it back to English which resulted in Lewis Carroll. So that is how the term Lewis Carroll came into prominence. And then uh, we have this another American writer who is known for his short stories that is O. Henry. So O. Henry, he wrote under the name, Will, uh, sorry, O. Henry, his pen name, uh, O. Henry is the pen name of William Sidney 
Porter. So, or entry is the William Sidney Porter. And in one interview, uh, Porter he mentions the way in which he took this character or took this name, or Henry. So, he took the name Henry from a random newspaper and then he uh, put the initial O because it is the easiest. Uh, I mean, easiest alphabet to pronounce and write. So that is O. Henry by William Sidney, sorry, O. Henry, the pen name of William Sidney Porter. And then we have Eric Arthur Blair. Eric Arthur Blair, he took the pen name George Orwell. So we know about George Orwell, he is an English novelist. So he took the uh, name George Orwell so that his family wouldn't be embarrassed by his time in poverty because uh, he wanted to write some biographical details where his poverty would be uh, exposed to the society and his fam and he never wanted his family to be embarrassed by uh, his time of poverty and therefore he took the name George Orwell and George Orwell, uh, he took the name George Orwell to reflect his love for English uh, tradition and landscape. So that is how the uh, name George Orwell came for um, Eric Arthur Blair. And then we have uh, Saki. Saki is the pen name of Hector Hugh Mandro. So Saki, Hector Hugh Mandro and uh, Munro, he took the name Saki as his pseudonym or as his pen name uh, because Saki is actually a character from the work of a Persian uh, poet Omar Khayyam. Okay, so Saki is a character of Omar Khayyam and since Munro, I was an, uh, I mean, was a fan of this uh, poet Omar Khayyam, he took the name Zaki as his pen name. Then we have George Eliot. So George Eliot, uh, George Eliot is the pen name of Mary Ann Evans and she took this uh, masculine name of George Eliot because she thought women writers were not taken seriously during that time. So she wanted her writings to be treated as equally as a male writer and that is the reason why she took the a male pseudonym as an example. So these are the uh, first set of um, writers. So Mark Twain, Mark Twain and Thomas Jefferson Snodgrass. These are the pen names of Samuel Clemens. Lewis Carroll is the pen name of Charles Ludwig Dodson. O. Henry is the pen name of William Sidney Porter. George Orwell is the name of Eric Arthur Blair. Zaki is the pen name of Hector Hugh Munro. And George Eliot is the pen name of Mary Ann Evans. So I think it's clear like why the writers had taken this name and the name of these writers.
So now let's look on the next set of writers. So we have Bose. Bose is the pen name in which Charles Dickens uh, wrote during his early career and it was titled as the imitatable, the inimitable Bose, the one who cannot be imitatable, that is the inimitable Bose. So uh, the Bose is actually the actually a nickname that he uh, called his younger brother. The nickname was really Moses and since Moses is like a nasal pronunciation, it normally turned to Bose and that is from where he took the name Bose. So Bose is the uh, work, I mean Bose, sorry, Bose is the pen name used by Charles Dickens at the early stage of his career. Similarly, Charles Lamb, he wrote for London magazine under the pseudonym Elia. Okay, so there were many rumors revolving around the name Elia and the most uh, common rumor is that Elia was actually the name of a person who worked as a cleric, worked as a cleric as a colleague to Charles Lamb. So he took the name and then the name got struck and that is why he continued using the name Elia. So Elia, Charles Lamb, this was once asked for an Indian net exam. So Elia, Elia is the pseudonym of Charles Lamb and the work that he wrote for, I mean the name that he uh, adopted for writing for the London magazine. Then we have HD. So HD or uh, Hilda Doolittle. So Hilda Doolittle, she wrote under the pseudonym HD for throughout her life. Throughout her life, she was known as HD and uh, she took this uh, title or she took uh, HD. That's actually the initial of her names or the first letters of her names, Hilda, Hilda Doolittle. And she took this uh, term HD or the name HD because she wanted much more like an uh, androgynous perso persona, like an indeterminate sex where the reader should be confused about whether, whether it's a female author or a male author. So that is SD stands for Hilda Doolittle. Then we have the pen name taken by Sylvia Plath that is Victoria Luque. Okay, Victoria Lucas. So, uh, Sylvia Plath, she took this pen name Victoria Lucas uh, in order to publish her uh, semi-autobiographical work Bell Jar because she does not want, uh, I mean, does not want her semi-autobiographical novel Bell Jar to be published under her name when her mother was still alive because she, because it has got many uh, problems of her childhood about her suicidal tendency. It's much more like a semi-autobiographical work and she never wanted that to be published when her mother was alive when uh, under her name so that is why she took the name Victoria Lucas then we have William S. Burrox and her pseudonym Tony Morrison but it was much more like a personal choice because she got this term Tony when she uh, converted to Catholicism and Morrison was much more uh, a, a, a a polished name of her, her ex-husband so that is Tony Morrison so let's have a look Bose uh, is the pen name of Charles Dickens, Elia, Charles Lamb that he wrote for Lenten magazine, HD stands for Hilda Doolittle, Victoria Lucas uh, that is Sylvia Plath and Tony Morrison is William S. Burrox. Then finally, we have the Bronte sisters that is Carrer Bell, Ellis Bell and Acton Bell. Carrer Bell, Ellis Bell and Acton Bell and they stand for the Bronte sisters that is Charlotte Bronte, Emily Bronte and and Bronte. So we know about the uh, Wuthering Heights and about the Bronte sisters. So they published under the name Carrer, Ellis and Acton Bill. So there were many reasons because they wanted to ensure their privacy. They wanted to avoid celebrity. There were many reasons for it. And at the same time, they also don't want, I mean, uh, they really wanted to keep their privacy. And they also, uh, I mean, they also uh, thought like uh, their topics were too unfeminine during that time. So they wanted it to be addressed by male voices. Then we have A.M. Bernard. Uh, A.M. Bernard is actually a name taken by Louisa May Alcott. So Louisa May Alcott, she published under the name uh, A.M. Bernard and she took this pen name A.M. Bernard in order to publish material that did not fit the public image that she wanted to maintain under her image. So she wanted, uh, she has got a public image that under her name, Louisa May Alcott. So when she wanted to publish things that does not suit this image or does not uh, suit the things that she advocated in her earlier work, she used the masculine name A.M. Bernard. Then we have Marguerite Annie Johnson who took the name Maya Angelou in order to uh, in order to catch the attention of the audience during her stage plays okay as an actor as a dancer she took this name Maya Angelou 
and then we have finally Mary Westmacott. So Mary Westmacott was the pen name of Agatha Mary Clarissa Christie or simply Agatha Christie. So we know Agatha Christie, she is known for her crime novels. But apart from these crime novels, she has also published six romantic novels under the title Mary Westmacott because she does not, as I said in the beginning of this session, some writers, they don't want, they want to, they want distance one sort of their works with the other. So she does not want her crime novels and romantic novels to be considered as equals or considered together. So she took, so she wrote the romance right, novels under the name Mary Westmacott. Okay, so Currer, Ellis and Acton Bell stands for Charlotte, Emily and Andy Bronte, the Bronte sisters. A.M. Bernard, it's a pen name of Louisa May Alcott, Maya Angelou, Marguerite Annie Johnson. Mary Westmacott is the pen name taken by Agatha Christie to write romantic novels. So that's about the major English writers and their pen names. So just remember, you can, you can, I mean, um, this is not uh, just from for a net point of view. This is really an interesting topic when it comes to literature, the real name and the pseudonyms of the writers. And it is also important for net point of view. There were many questions asked from pseudonyms or pen names in the previous years. So that's all for this video. Thank you.